Hello, I'm Mr Singleton, one of the Associate Directors of Science for Outward Academy and this lesson is all about particle motion in gases. Now if you are at home please make sure you have a pen and paper and a ruler ready. If you are in school make sure you have your books, a pen, a whiteboard and a whiteboard pen and ruler ready. This lesson is just all about um, how we can change the pressure in gases, looking at volume and looking at temperature and really looking what pressure is. So that's what this lesson will be about. So a pre-starter here, if you are at home, please just do this on a piece of paper or you can do it in your head if you can, if you can remember the bits. Uh, if you are in school, then please do this on a mini whiteboard. What I want you to do is tell me the arrangement of particles. So just describe those particles in a solid, liquid and gas. Remember those are the three states of matter what those particle movements are like, so how the particles move, and then a quick diagram. I'll give you four minutes, off you go. You've got two minutes left. Thirty more seconds.
Okay, and I'm I'm doing this because sometimes this comes up as a six mark question in the exam and people leave it blank. So I just want to make sure that you fully get this. And you can always draw the particles. If it says describe the particles in a six mark question, you can draw them. Um, it's what you should have got. The particles in a solid are really close together and they're regular and their movement, they just vibrate on a fixed position. So they're all nice and close together, all touching. In a liquid, they're all close together, but it's random. So that's the only difference is it's random. And the particles have a little bit more kinetic energy and they can move around a bit more. Notice they are all still touching there as well. Gases are far apart, completely random, move very quickly, lots of kinetic energy in all directions. Um, and yeah, so when you draw them, uh, really, usually you don't draw them touching. They can bounce off each other, but usually you don't draw them touching when in a random arrangement. Now the question at the bottom here, how is the motion of the gas different to the motion in the solids and the liquids? And that's just the fact that it's completely random and it moves a lot more, it's a lot more uh, free flowing, move around in quickly. Title, if you're doing this uh, on a revision card at home, then particle motion in gases. If you're doing this uh, in your classroom, then please put the title and the date and underline both of them. So the two things that we're going to have a look at, the challenge is describe the motion of molecules within a gas and then the aspire is to explain how changing the temperature of a gas will affect the pressure and that's within a fixed container or fixed volume, so something that's closed where the gas can't escape. So they're the two things. So looking at the diagrams on the right hand side of your screen here, what can you tell me about the movements in solids, liquids, and gases just from their arrows? I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay, so hopefully you've realized that solids are all together. They just vibrate in one place. Liquids can go past each other, but gas particles go all over the, all over the continent. I'm going to talk about how temperature, kinetic energy, and speed are related. In uh, molecules of gas, they are constantly moving around, like we've just said in the starter. So they're constantly moving around, but as we... As we talk about temperature, that's related exactly to the kinetic energy of those molecules. Basically, the higher the temperature, the greater the kinetic energy, and so the faster the speed of the molecules. So if I get a balloon and I close it all up, uh, blow it up and then close it up, and then I put some temperature or put some heat onto that, then the temperature increases and the kinetic energy of those particles will also increase. Now, yeah, I always try and think about this as when I'm blowing up a balloon or something like that, what I'm doing is I'm putting in um, lots more particles into that balloon. Okay, and what happens is when I'm blowing up that balloon, the particles hit the side of the wall of the balloon causing pressure, and that's what keeps the balloon up, okay? So this is a container similar to a balloon, okay? The particles will hit the side of the wall and that causes pressure. And the more frequent the collisions are between the particles and the wall, 
the higher the pressure, the greater the pressure is in the gas. So if I put lots and lots of particles within a balloon by blowing it up with lots and lots of gas particles, then the pressure increases. And if I put too much particles in, then eventually the, the balloon pops. In terms of the, in terms of um, how that works in a tire, similar thing. When you are pumping a tire, you are putting more particles in, which increases the pressure, which therefore keeps your tires on your bike upright. So what causes pressure in a gas cylinder? How does the number of collisions affect the gas pressure? And now, this is just a bit about applying it. Why should you never put an aerosol can in a fire? Now that is a closed container and there are little gas particles in there. So this is just adding a little bit about temperature in there. I'll, I'll let you think about them for two minutes. Off you go. One more minute. Okay, so we'll go through these answers. What causes pressure in a gas cylinder? It's the particles hitting the side or colliding with the side of the container or the walls of the container. How does the number of collisions affect gas pressure? The more collisions there are, the higher the gas pressure or the greater the gas pressure. Why should you never put an aerosol can in a fire? And that's because as you, as it, as the gas particles are in a fire, it will heat up, causing the particles to move faster, and that could then cause the container to explode. Charles Law states, at constant pressure, the volume of a given mass of an ideal gas increases or decreases by the same factor as its temperature in Kelvin increases or decreases. If you don't understand that, well just wait a moment and we'll show you. First we're going to put a little bit of water, about a teaspoon, into a soda can. When heated, the water and air molecules inside the can begin to move very rapidly, most escaping the can. Although few molecules remain in the can, they are moving so rapidly that they exert enough pressure to keep the can from being crushed by the outside or atmospheric pressure. Once you see water vapor billowing out of the can, take metal tongs and quickly turn the can upside down and place it in the water. Get ready for a surprise. When the can is placed in the water, the molecules cool, slowing down and condensing, that is, taking up less room or volume. When this happens, they no longer exert enough pressure inside the can to withstand the atmospheric pressure, and a vacant spot is left in the can. The pressure inside and outside the can is no longer equal, and the greater atmospheric pressure crushes the can. Why did you have to turn the can upside down? If you had put the can in upside right, air would have rushed into the can. The pressure would have been equalized and the can would have remained inflated. Putting it upside down in the water is a simple and rapid way to seal the can, 
so that we can observe the effects of atmospheric pressure. Did you see that? Yeah. How does temperature affect the pressure of a gas? Well, if you have a fixed amount of gas, so it's in a container and it's in a constant volume, so you're not decreasing the shape or changing the shape of that um, uh, object, then the pressure is directly proportional to the temperature, which means that if I change the temperature, if I increase the temperature, then I'm going to increase the pressure in, in that container. So the average velocity of the gas particles increases, which incre in turn increases the number of collisions, which then means they hit the wall more often, which then means that the pressure is increased. So the more, this is just about the, the higher the temperature, the more those particles move around, the more they hit the side of the container, and that is what causes pressure. To show this, we can look at this table up in the top right hand corner. The pressure when the temperature is zero is one newtons per meter squared. But then as we increase that temperature by 25 degrees Celsius, it goes up to 1.1. We add it to another 25 degrees Celsius, so we have another 25 degrees Celsius, it goes up to 1.2, showing it's directly proportional. Okay, so it's a linear relationship because it goes up by the same amount every single time. As the temperature goes up by 25 degrees Celsius, it goes up by 0 0.1 newton per square meter. Okay, and that's the effect of temperature. It causes some particles and gas particles to have much more kinetic energy, which means they hit the wall a lot more, of the wall of the container a lot more, which therefore then means the pressures increase. That is the end of the lesson if you are a combined student. So if you want to write a quick revision card, it's a very easy one. It's just as you increase the temperature in the gas, you also increase increase the kinetic energy of the particles, which means you increase the pressure. Therefore, if I, I'll go back to the balloon idea. If I've got my balloon and I blow it up and then I put some heat onto it, eventually the particles, even though I'm not blowing it up anymore, the particles will increase with their kinetic energy because of the temperature increase and it would burst the balloon. If you want to pause this and write this revision card, that's fine. I'm going to move on to the next slide.